from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Everybody. Thank you for being here this morning. My name is Darren Jones. I am the program director for the Daniel A.P. Murray African American Cultural Association here at the Library of Congress. On an, on an, and on behalf of the Daniel Murray Association and our president and board member who is sitting here at the front and all of the members of the association and the Library of Congress Cooking Club and the Library of Congress Health Services Office, I want to thank you for being here today. I want to welcome you. I know it's been a rough day yesterday, if you were like me, shoveling a lot of snow, and it was kind of difficult getting here, but I want to thank you for being here today. I want to introduce our speaker for this morning, Chef Thomas, Chef Daniel Thomas. He is a culinary expert. He is a ce celebrity chef. He is also um, the former chef for the Senate of the United States. He has cooked for President Obama, and Vice President Biden, I'd like to hear what he cooked for them. And he has been on many different programs. You've probably seen him on many of the different shows that you see on uh, BET and a lot of other programs. So we're gonna ask him to come forward and if he's going to give us a culinary exploration. And then after he's done that, we're gonna have a question and answer period with Chef Thomas, with Dr. Day, and with our own health services officer, um, Dr. <laughs> Charles. I was going to say Sandra. I forgot her first name, Sandra Charles. So we're going to have all of them come forward at some point, and they're going to give us a question and answer period. I do have a couple of questions for them. So we're going to ask Chef Ch Thomas to come forward, and we're going to ask him to give us a presentation. And then after all of that is done, he does have some books here that you can purchase. Um, this book was featured at the um, 2014 Book Festival of the Library of Congress, and he also is going to sign the book if you want to have it signed. So please come forward, Chef. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Dr. Sandra Charles, who is the Chief Medical Officer for the Library of Congress, which is just very, very exciting. Maybe do a little dance there. So thank you so much, Dr. Sandra Charles. I want to thank the LC Cooking Club and also the Daniel, which is a great name. I don't know who that is, but Daniel A.P. Murray. Cultural Association. Thank you all uh, for having me as well. So appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now it's a little crazy. Now we got that out of the way. Um, and thank you to the Library of Congress. Uh, it's a little crazy because last time uh, I was at the convention center for the Library of Congress National Book Festival, and we were on Channel Four, Channel Five, Channel Seven. I mean, it was it was crazy. Good Morning America, and then we had about four thousand people in a cooking demonstration. I mean, I, you couldn't see. Like, it, all you saw was, was heads you, you, and eyes. You, you couldn't see, and teeth. They were smiling. We saw teeth. We did see a lot of teeth. So it was good during that time. Um, and so today, instead of 5,000, we had five. But that's great, because it's, that means what? Matter of fact, at the convention center, who ate at the convention center? Nobody. Nobody. Well, Mr. Billington did. He, he sat front, and I took care of him in the back. So he ate. But who else ate? No one. So now who's going to eat here today? Who's going to eat here today? Me. Oh, okay, man. I, look, I traveled through the snow. We almost, Larry and I, we almost died trying to come across the street. Uh, because you know how when you come out the front door of, the, uh, of this building, and Library Con the, the, the main building is right across the street, they usually have a, like a little pathway. This, well, it was snow banked. And we kind of did a, we, we did a step over action there. So, um, my name is Chef Daniel Thomas. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, quick, you know, he did uh, just a little let you know some of the things that we are doing right now. Um, I have cooked for the president, uh, Congress, vice president. I'll let you know what I've cooked for them. Uh, it's also in the book here. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and show you very quickly. And it is in this chapter right here. Favorite dish I cooked for President Barack Obama. Um, but I won't let you know that until you buy the book. <laughs> Praise him. So, so we have that. Uh, ha praise him. Come on. We, have, we don't have church in here now. So, so I'm excited. Uh, who likes to eat here? 
Uh, everybody doesn't like to eat here? All right, all right, all right. See some hands. You all ladies, there are some chairs up here in front if you wanted to VIP it up. Get the, you sure? All right, all right. That's what happens when you come late. I got to, got to get you. <laughs> but uh, I've done that. I have managed the diets of uh, some hundred plus U.S. senators. And I know you're like, hmm, there's only a hundred senators, but some come and go. But I, I've stayed. And so I managed the diets of over a hundred U.S. senators, uh, Congress, Speaker of the House, uh, close to 100 foreign presidents, prime ministers, including the president of Afghanistan, uh, uh, Pakistan, Mexico, uh, President Netanyahu, just a number of them, uh, things like that, managing their diets, dealing with health. Because the thing is, you know, if I go and uh, cook for these, so let me just give you a little pressure cooker, crack pot little situation that I have to go through. So I have about, uh, you know, the senators, they're a little older, seasoned, no pun intended, but they're, they're a little seasoned. And they do, um, it's about 14 of them in the Foreign Relations Committee. And then you have the president of, let's say, a foreign country. Well, they'll come to me and say, hey, uh, you can't mess this up because if you give them pork and they're Muslim, or if you give them the wrong type of food and they get sick or something like that, it can be an act of regression and you can start a war. <sighs> who, wants, who wants to cook over there now? Any hands? So it's pretty crazy. It, don't get me wrong, it was an honor. Um, but, you know, we, we never messed up there. Um, and I also do this thing. I am bringing the sexy back into healthy eating. Is that all right? Any, good. Ladies? Yeah. Fellas? <laughs> You're like, all right, all right. Had to deepen the voice a little bit. <laughs> so we're doing that. Um, I'm now transitioning. Um, I now cook for, I still, with my own business, I still cook for senators, um, Congress, you know, uh, our high elected pol you know, political leaders. I was a chef for the Democratic National Convention. I'm going to be the chef for the Democratic National Convention in 2016, which will be in Philadelphia. If you all didn't know where it was going to be, it's going to be in Philadelphia. Um, the Republican National Convention is going to be in. Um, I heard two, St. Louis and Cincinnati. Which one is it? Cincinnati. 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 Oh, oh, she said, "I got gotcha. you." All right, <laughs> it's, it's going to be in Cincinnati, um, and so I'll probably most likely be going there. Um, we are, I have a lot of celebrity clients now. I've cooked for Bruno Mars, I've cooked for uh, Jay-Z, Beyonce, I've cooked for Hill Harper, um, just different, you know, uh, Martha Stewart. <laughs> Let me out! Just, just kidding, you guys, just kidding. Make sure that wasn't recorded, you know, just kidding, just kidding, you know? <laughs> I had to get one of them, you know? That's, that's it, that's the last one, that's the last one. I like to have fun in the kitchen, is that all right? Is that all right? Food, food, can be, food, food can be fun, right? Yeah. We don't have to be, well, the, uh, I know this is, we have the doctors here. I mean, we have like the top doctors in the world sitting in front of me right now, but we can kind of get a little excited about healthy eating and food. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about that, about uh, phytonutrients and things like that. Did I say that correctly? I sure did. That's my Dr. Damon Jones. Let's give her a hand. She did a great job today, didn't she? <laughs> is anybody in social media here? All right, we have, a, we have a younger crowd here. All right. Um, if you are in social media, I'll give you my you know, handle. is Chef D.W. Thomas. Uh, or you can find me on Facebook at Daniel W. Thomas, which is my personal page, or my uh, other page, which is Chef Daniel Thomas, you can find online. Stuff like that. So that's that. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make a, um, an amazing salad. They have restrictions on what you can uh, cook inside the building. Um, so, there will be no filet mignon uh, eating today <laughs> and lobster. I had that last night. Matter of fact, somebody tell me right now, who had a great Valentine's Day dinner? <laughs> well, I know what you had, Dr. Charles. <laughs> like, what was it? Lobster. Oh, she got it. You should have seen it. She's lobster tail, <laughs> lobster tail. And now you see how, you see quickly she said, and salad. Like she had the, I had the butter with the lobster tail, but I did have a salad, you know? <laughs> What else? Anything, anybody do anything healthy? It, it what? She had blue cheese dressing. It was nothing healthy about that side. Uh, anybody else? Okay, what about dinner yesterday? Yeah, what did you prepare? Mm -hmm. And carrots, celery, okra, uh, some potatoes, and 
potatoes, small potatoes that were terrific. I don't know. I, I know where Fingerling? I'm from, but no, I don't know. Purple? No, no. Red Bliss. Little tiny potatoes like this. Um, they were reddish, but really good. Um, well, well, more vegetables in, and, and herbs. In okay. Canada. Now, did you, let me ask you a question. Did you use a stock? Uh, garlic. Uh, no, I'm not, like a broth or something? Did you? No. Water? Water. And now, now can, I, can I talk about that real quick in terms of we're talking about heart health? Let's just go into this whole stock thing, you know, as we go in, because I'm going to answer all of your food questions and things like that, because I'm sure you all have lots of them. Like, how do you make this? Where do you come into my house to cook for me? Stuff like that. But in terms of healthy eating, we usually hear about uh, low sodium. You'll see on the label, it will say, uh, and just so you know, this is not, oh, you know, little, oh, oh, I like the look. <laughs> you know, but usually on the label, uh, let's say that this is a, a broth or something like that, and it says uh, the milligrams for uh, sodium, which is what? Salt. Salt, salt would be usually what? For, uh, you know, two pints of broth. How much would that you A quart. About 680, 700, and things like that. Now, what would you, now that's, that's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. What would you consider low sodium? So now the box, box says low sodium. How much do you think that is? 300. Well, it's usually about 590. But, it, but you all, us as a community, not a race, not color, as, as a community of humans, we look at the stuff that they put on TV. Like all those little 100 calorie snack packs are garbage for you. They are packed with so many calories. Who likes oatmeal? And they're like, oh my gosh, my oatmeal is so heart healthy. Eh. Let's, let's talk about it. Who eats oatmeal every morning? Or, or from time to time, or good supporters of oatmeal. When you eat the instant, I love it. She's back there. She's like, I sure do. You have to understand that. So who likes the regular instant oatmeal? I can't say the bottle because I don't want to get sued, but that, that big old red and white box with, with, with the guy with a hat. <laughs> okay, we eat that, right? Now, how much sugar is in it? It says zero grams of sugar, though. But actually, it is 80 to 100 hidden sugar calories per one-fourth cup. Ha, I'm like a pass. I think I just said something. It says 80 to 100 hidden sugar calories per one fourth cup. So if you find yourself that you, you, know, you don't have, but then you also add your, your fruit. Anybody have diabetes in here or you know someone that has diabetes? But hurry everyone, right? Well, it's not good for you, you know, because when you start adding your fruit and stuff like that, dealing with grapes, I'm not going to go into diabetes because we're talking about heart health, even though diabetes is definitely in terms of um, eating hot foods and things like that. Uh, with good circulation, things like that. My doctor helped me out with that one in terms of, uh, I'm sorry, she, I'm sorry, anything I say out, and she gives me like, because some, you know, people will try to question me, and I'll answer the question, and then if I need help, I'll be like, Dr. Sandra Charles, uh, if you can give me a little word on this. So if you see me point to you all, just be ready to kind of jump in, okay? Um, correct, I love it. So I'm the regional executive chef for the American Diabetes Association. And so I do a lot of, with diabetes. I have a lot of clients with diabetes. Uh, I'm sure people are going to be asking me questions today about vegan, veganism. I had uh, Chris Tucker ask me, he's like, man, I want to change the diabetes uh, to vegan. Is it good? Most people do not know how to eat vegan. And so when they try it, they find themselves losing too much weight too fast or not getting the, the nutrients that they need. And just people, anybody have a religion that you, you uh, from time to time, you will make sure that you, um, that you have to fast from time to time. After this, if you have any questions, I would love to talk to you. I'm working on another book right now about how to fast during your religion. And I will have the different religions in the book and things like that. Because what happens is we will fast for 10 days. And it's all about making sure you have the right carbs, the right ingredients of how to fast before and what to eat before you go on your fast and then afterwards. And I know you're looking at me like, where's the food now? Because you're sitting here. If you all want to come up, you all, there's some VIP seats up here in the front. If you guys wanted to come, I see you in the back. You got to come on up. I'm trying to tell you, I'm going to get you. Anybody else? Oh, that, see, I got another one. Is there one? <laughs> I can get another one. I can get another one. My dad's a pastor, so you might hear me say that a lot, you know? It was, it was actually crazy. I went to this uh, interfaith summit. Anybody know what an interfaith summit is? I went to one. It was, it was, it was different. You know, you know, I guess when you get used to believing in one faith, you know, sometimes you think that's the only one that's out there, you know? 
you know, God, Jesus, praise him. Let's do it. But then you have some people who don't believe in this, don't believe in that. And I respect them. That's what you do. You know, it's just, you know, it's all about respecting each other. So that's a whole other topic. We'll talk about that later. On the next visit, inter- interfaith and healthy eating. That's the next, that's the next one. I'll be back. Um, and the last thing I want to talk to you about as we get ready to start. <laughs> all right. Last thing. Uh, <laughs> I thought we could have fun, right, you guys? We could have fun. So, uh, yeah. Oh. You see, right, right in there. So the other thing I want to talk to you about is what I'm working on next. Everybody say, what are you working on next, Chef? What are you working on next, Chef? All right, a little dyslexia in there. Don't worry about it. A little backwards. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I have it too. My numbers get backwards sometimes. I have ADD. So if you hear me talking about one thing, I might jump to something else. Just bring me back, okay? Um, did she say yes? I, I, I don't need you to second the motion, okay? Well, the thing that I'm working on is uh, I'm getting ready to... Sign a contract this week for my very own TV show. Oh! I can, I can drink while you guys are clapping. There we go. All right. Um, so I'm very, very excited. I just found out from um, my agent called me. And you know when you're waiting, that's stress. I need to call Dr. Jones to say, hey, what are some stress relieving techniques? Because I'm getting ready to pull my hair out and I have none. Do you know I'm a young man and I have gray hair here and here? It's not supposed to be that way. Praise, say, come on, I, it, it's tough. It's tough. People, I have, I have one, um, anybody like Chef Carla Hall from The Chew? I want her in Chew, right? And she's my mentor. So she calls me and gives me advice, and she was like, people see the things that's on Facebook and on the internet and think that's your life. They, and so she was like, Daniel, it says that I am a multimillionaire. It says that I'm worth $3 million. My estimate network. She was like, Daniel, if you find it, I'll give you half of it. <laughs> and people think that that's your life. I'm, I'm working on that. Hopefully, I'll be able to give a dollar to each of you all. <laughs> you know, it's all about what you have, you know? <laughs> so, so I am, uh, so the show is going to be done with politicians, what it's like to cook for celebrities and politicians and the president and stuff like that, but in a great kind of funky way. I'm going to probably do some dancing. I'm going to have a band. I'm going to have an audience. So I'll make sure I send, when we do the email blast, who wants to come to be in the audience uh, for one of the shows? Uh, oh, make some noise. Show some love. Come on. Woo! Here we go. Here we go. Woo! Man, you're going to see a lot of people come in here. Mr. Billington, what's going on, you guys? You know, his office is right down the street here. You know, he actually came to my, uh, my, my book signing. And true, true. I mean, it was a gangster move. He, he took his chair. And there were thousands of people in there. He sat right here. Him and his wife said, come on. <laughs> and they both tried it. Uh-oh. OK. So let's get started. Is that OK? Yes. I couldn't hear you guys. Can we get started? Yes. There we go. All right. Man, I'm trying to tell you. You can't be in the audience if you're if you quiet. I'm trying to tell you. So I, w- I will let you know that I do have this bowl. I want to thank Gurmy and the people who assisted, the AV the everybody people in the back the recording because i i walked in and i broke oh you were he made me nervous (laughs) so at least you all know that that he bought my hmm what he likes oh no uh, no oh the uh so it was crazy because i um i had a nice nice good old but wasn't a nice bowl you see how you see how he, he knew he did it. You see how he's trying to cheat me. <laughs> so no, what he tried to mess this up. <laughs> that come on, everybody just point right at him. Just point right at him. You know, just point right at him. You know, I was what? Cause I was like, and the cop and the police was like, I was like, come on. So yeah, I had a uh, good to see you, chef. I show love to chefs. Um, I'm not one of those uh, crab in a in, in a barrel. Even though I love crabs, I'm not one of those crab in a barrel. If I, if I can, any way I can help, we can help each other out. I'll, I'll contact whatever. Come to Capitol Hill. Let me know. So I always show love to other chefs and things like that coming up. Um, and you probably are better than me. So, <laughs> but you did break my bowl though. So <laughs> I'll let you know that. All right. So so let's get started. Um, but I did have a glass bowl, so I thank them for this and things like that. Um, it's probably still down there. I don't know if they clean it up. So if you wear no shoes walking into the front door, you might want to start wearing shoes now. Um, it could be a problem. Um, I also found out that, so I have this in my, so I shake hands all the time. I'm always shaking hands. I get sick from time to time. My immune system, I think it's pretty good. 
Um, and if you all, if you all want to come up here, I know you all are sitting back there. If you all want to just come up, I'm trying to tell you. So when people get in here, just come on up. Get on up. Mm-mm. Get on up. I said, come on. I don't know why she wants to stay back there. If you, young lady, if you don't get up here, uh, she's going to wave. All right. All right. Now, doctors, one and two, if you can let me know. So I put this, this stuff on all the time. Purell, I have it in my car. I'm not like the monk. You know that TV show, The Monk, where, you know, somebody shake his hand and he's like, you know. But I do, I do shake my, I do shake a lot of hands, and you get sick like that, you know, because people are coughing. Some people don't, you know, wash their hands after using the bathroom. That's heart health because you're hurting my heart that you didn't wash your hands when you left the bathroom. So, but they also say there's something in here that your body gets immune to it, and you know, it's not really help. It's like putting on lotion. Is that true? Oh really? So I can continue to use it for life and. They say that your body kind of gets used to it. I keep a little lotion in my pocket. Hold on, remember. <laughs> but, but, but just for you all, I have. So I wanted to give you a quick rundown as I'm cooking and as I'm demonstrating for you all about the different. And any pictures you take, could you all send them to me? I'll give you my information because I would love to, you know, this is, I'm not going to lie. I think, excuse my language, this is pretty badass. <laughs> I got the elaborate. And the American flag, come on. This is a chicken diabetic sauce. Hey, big guy, how you doing? I'm just saying, like this is it's a it's an honor to be here. I just want to let you guys know I'm humbled and honored to be here. This is the, whether it's one person in here or eight thousand. This is the Library of Congress. Hello, hello, hello. come on, yes. This, if, if anybody's sleeping on that and say, oh, it's, you got to pay me or it's not enough people, you crazy as I don't know what. This is the Library of Congress. This is our library. I cook for the librarian of our nation. Take that. You crazy. <laughs> I get excited about stuff like that. So I'm going to tell you about uh, a number of things in one second dealing with, uh, uh-oh, get out of here. There we go. Um, got my assistance program here. Uh, dealing with, so we talk about uh, heart health. I want to also show love. It's February, Black History Month. So, you know, um, I actually, a little known black history fact, I was actually the first African American chef to ever uh, be asked to be a part of the prestigious Library of Congress National Book Festival. So that's my little Black History Month uh, <laughs> uh, action there, you know? A little love, you know? So, from asparagus to sweet potatoes, things like that. Uh, we're dealing with heart health. We're dealing with healthy eating and what is it like to make sure your heart is healthy. Um, I do a lot of healthy eating and diet management. People come to me at, all the time asking, well, what can I do to make my life better? What can I do? I have a, a movie coming out and I, I'm the star and I need to lose 30 pounds in two days. I say, cure yourself. <laughs> like, you know, because that's what you're going to do if you keep on in this track. Some people like to throw up, please. Do not make yourself throw up. Some people think that if you throw up, it's, it's, it's good for you. It is terrible for you. You're, you're creating the acid and you're creating the lining inside. You're just messing it all up. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, see my information. <laughs> Don't worry. So understand that uh, through these things, so dealing with diabetes and things like that, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's, you have to understand that losing weight if most people say, you know, you have trainers who are like, they have nothing on their bones and they're like, come on, you can get it. Come on, give me 20 miles and you weigh 300 pounds. That's not going to work. Let's talk about heart health and exercising before we go in just to the food portion. If you are overweight and you're obese, and a lot of times we think even right now, you're like, you know what? That boy doesn't look half bad. He actually, you know, I'm overweight in terms of my height and my weight. How much do you think I weigh? Don't get in trouble. How much do you think I weigh? See, 217. Well, it's, it's, it's a rock, though. Hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. Wait a minute. They, they eyeballed me the wrong way. That, it's, it's, I, I got two tickets left to the gun show. That, I'm, so, I'm, a, I'm a cheesy chef. I'm a cheesy chef. I'll let you know that now. But what happens is, so, but, I, but I'm obese. If you look at the category, I am obese. So my first tip for you today is in terms of healthy eating, one, if you're going to exercise, the quickest way to lose weight or to at least start burning calories and fat is just walk. Just a little walking. 
if you have time, everybody grab a partner in here and for five or 10 minutes a day during your lunch break, just take a walk around the building. This building is huge. Just do a quick walk around the building. And I promise you, it's certain things you can do in your chair that I'm sure Dr. Damon Jones later on would love to talk to you about, about just doing exercises in your chair, you know, ab exercises. But if you, when you start walking, you don't know how far you can go until you start doing it. And some people like to use the elevators. Find a stairwell. There are plenty of stairwells in here. And, it, and no one uses them. So if you want to take a break, no one's going to see you. <laughs> I'm serious. If you want to take a break, no one's going to see you. You would say, whew. But at least and you start doing it. So you take one flight of steps and then take the elevator the rest of the way. And then you find out you take two flights. But you never know unless you start trying. Also, learning in terms of heart health, learning when to eat. Now, I'm going to ask you a question that everybody knows. What's the most important meal of the day? You guys are amazing. He, I think he said it first. He, he was like, breakfast. I'm just letting you know. He, you know. So breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Why is that? Ah, whoa, 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 whoa. he got kind of quiet. What's going on? Huh? Cur, cur, uh, that's a great, great one. Go ahead. Oh, it. I'm very famished in the morning, so I eat. Go ahead, young lady. I was going to say it helps your metabolism, too. Correct. So let's talk about metabolism. So give each other a hand. That was, that was good. I, I was a little nervous because everybody said breakfast, and then when I said why. <laughs> so let's talk about why. Let's talk about metabolism. What happens with metabolism in the morning? I consider metabolism like the sun. The sun, and I'm glad that we have like this little small intimate crowd because we can really talk and you can understand what I'm saying, and I don't have to cook right away for you guys to kind of, you know, you guys are not like, where's the food? You, you know, because we have the plates back there, so that at any moment's notice, you can grab food, but just know there's no salad dressing on it, and I did it that way, so you wouldn't get up. Take that. <laughs> <laughs> so understand that if you look at this, metabolism is like the sun. When you wake up, your metabolism starts to kind of like a car engine. And what happens with the sun? The sun starts to rise. When you eat your breakfast, what happens to your metabolism? It start, say again? It starts to rise. It starts to get better and better and better. And what happens is at nighttime, when you leave and the sun is getting ready to come down, what happens to your metabolism? It starts to slow down. And that means that those enzymes, I mean, you're pretty much relying on just enzymes breaking down foods and stuff like that in your system and your salivary glands. Anybody know that salivary glands helps break down food, your saliva? saliva? Now, let me tell you about saliva. Saliva is not a game. You ever, I have one of those sonic toothbrushes. And I, I consider saliva like Coke, like Coca-Cola. I had to make sure I said, yeah, you get, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, let's make sure we understand that. Everybody was like. Give me the church finger, stop walking out of here. <laughs> Slurry that glass is like Coca-Cola because if I have one of those sonic toothbrushes and if once you use your toothbrush, the saliva will sometimes, if you didn't rinse it well enough, it will drip down. And you find out that all that hard stuff at the bottom and that black stuff that's in your sink and stuff like that that you have to wash every week is from your saliva because it's, it's, it breaks down. And so that's what it does to your food and things like that. So one thing to help out with your heart health is one, chew 20 times for every bite. Oh, I got a lot of, ooh, ooh. Didn't. So most of the time when you chew, you scoff it down. Don't lie. Who chews 20 times per bite? Don't, look, look, Sunday just passed. Don't. All right, these two over here. Okay, the doctor, I give you, the, matter of fact, I've seen you eat. I don't know, doc. I, I, I give you 17, but 20, I don't know, you know? But what happens is you have to chew your food at least 20 times. Matter of fact, I want everybody to do that real quick. Just, you ready? So on a count of three, I want you to start chewing with me. We're gonna do 20 times, and you let me know if you do this. Ready? One, two, three. Mm. Who does that? <laughs> Heck no, y'all don't do that. No, you don't. Oh, no, does she? Because I know, for me, I don't, I don't do it a lot of times. I'm sitting there, and it's like, it's, it's crazy. I'm, you know, I, if it's good, cause don't get me wrong, I'm a humble person. But when it comes to food, and ever, oh, I'm like, you, you, I don't want to save it. I, it's good. I had lobster and uh, shrimp and steak uh, the other night. And I, I mean, I cooked the brick, Lord Jesus. It was so, 
I took 20 bites for the whole steak. You know, that, that's what it, <laughs> it just melted in your mouth. You just want to go down, you know? So as I get ready to cook this food, you deal with your metabolism, it goes down. And what happens is, you see my ADD, I brought it back. You, you, you like that? Metabolism. So who likes to eat a big dinner? Be honest. Raise your hand. You, liars in here. <laughs> Blasphemy. A, a big dinner. When you go home, you're tired, and you just want to eat. Who eats fast food a lot? Oh. I'm not going to judge you. A little bit. I'm not going to judge you. I eat fast food. filet fish from McDonald's. That thing is pretty banging. It's not a game. The fries. But what you do is you got to take off one piece of bread. One thing to help with your, with your heart health and also dealing with weight loss and things like that because you don't understand that the more fat that you put, everything about, that I'm doing, talking about food, is heart health because the more weight that you have, the more what has to work harder? The heart. The heart has to work harder. And so when you need a heart transplant and you have all that weight, I mean, trying to, it's like, you ever try to pick somebody up that's 300 pounds? Think of your heart trying to run every organ and things like that, and you're 300 pounds. You know, you got to work on that kind of stuff. So back to metabolism. So at nighttime, we eat a big dinner. Or we eat pretty, you know, a pretty sized dinner. And what happens? What do we do afterwards? Who works out after dinner? I believe you. I, I, I get out. We're going to send a camera crew to your house. Check that out. Don't worry about it. You know? So what do we usually do? What happens on Thursdays? What do we watch? Scandal. That's terrible. Everybody knows that one. And then what happens after that? Uh, walk the dog. Sometimes it's that, what is that, you know, how to get away with, uh... <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Who in here knows how to get away with murder so far? So I, tell you, I know not to come to you, you know? So, that's what happens though. So you do that, you, you, you watch your TV shows, and then you go to sleep. Your metabolism, it, it said, hey look, good night. And so what is that, what is that food and that fat do? It sits there. And what happens when you're in the morning? You're like, wait a minute. And I'm going to be real, ladies. A lot of times, you say to yourself, this is, this is the thing, and, 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 and this is where it gets serious. A lot of times you say, you know what? I feel bloated. I think I'm going to come on my period or something like that. And you know what? That's not the case. That's just you eating. And then, you, and then, you, and then you're like, okay, well, it didn't come on for a certain amount. Okay, hmm. You start, well, I don't know what that is. And then your period finally comes on later on, and you find out that that bloating is not bloating. You're just getting bigger. Fellas, the same thing. You kind of say, you know what? And we, we, as fellas, as men, we know how to suck it in and make it look good. Am I, am I telling it? Am I telling it? Let, let's, let's just keep it real. Because sex has, has a lot to do with heart health. But when we're when we getting ready, they know how to, like you all have, women have body shapers, right? Us men, we have something called uh, wife beaters or uh, what, what's the other name for it? Tank tops. It's, like a, it's, it's, a, it's a man tank top. I didn't want to say, oh, but it's a man tank top. And what you do is, it shapes us. I know how to make this look good. You hear me? <laughs> and so what happens is, I don't because it looks good in the mirror or something like that, I don't go and do the things that I'm supposed to do with my health, and I realize that, you know what, hey, but in relationships, heart health is great because we want our spouses to live, correct? So it's also, whether you're single or not, it's always good to have a partner or something like that to work with to say, hey, I'm falling off, let's get back to it, take a walk during the day. So I'm going to make a salad for you today. There's so many foods that are packed with phytonutrients, and what phytonutrients does is pretty much is the thing that helps battle and prevent Heart, say, I can hear, heart what? Heart disease. Heart disease and things like that. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make, didn't break that one, you see? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a vinaigrette. And then I want somebody to try it. Is that okay? Yes. I don't know. Capital Police, I think they took a couple of my items here. Uh, where's my whisk? Don't have a whisk here. So we're going to use a... Uh, so the first thing, what components do you need for a vinaigrette? Did you all know that you can make your own vinaigrette at home? Yes. For, for, for how much money? Yes. For nothing. I ask, who, has, who has extra virgin olive oil at home? Who has vegetable oil at home? All right, that's one thing. Who has citrus fruits at home? Like oranges or something like that. Who has mustard at home? Yes. You have a vinaigrette. It's only three parts. 
Oh, she, she like, you like that one? You like, you like, that's all right? That's all right? It's only three parts. It's the emulsifier, which is your mustard. It's your fat, which is your oil. And it's your acid, which is your, your citrus, your acidity, your vinegar, or something like that. So I have a couple of things here. I have some uh, Marsala, excuse me, I have some Marsala wine. I have some r reserve rosé vinegar. You can get fancy with this stuff. Now, when you go to grocery stores and you see that bottle of vinaigrette, what do you see sitting at the top? Which is also what? Fat. So when you see it says zesty, robust Italian, low fat, the heck it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> like, you want to sit there and tell me? I'm looking at it right here. But what do they get you with? No, but, 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 but in terms of, in terms of visual, visually, what do you see at the bottom that looks so just yummy when you shake it up? All the, the time. And, you know, that stuff costs pennies. They got a mixture, oil, vinegar. I mean, they get the cheapest vinegar, the cheapest oil, and then they shake it up and add a whole bunch of salt and a whole bunch of stuff to make it, you know, uh, not change colors and things like that, and that's your vinaigrette. So if you knew that you can do a low-fat vinaigrette at home and not pay that amount of money and now kind of do something sexy in the kitchen for your significant other, would you do that? Yeah. So can I, I'm going to show you. So the first thing that you need is your emulsifier. Now, oil and vinegar, what happens to oil and vinegar? They separate. Say it again, sir. They separate. They separate. Give this man a round of applause, please. Please, show us a lot. So they separate. When they separate, what has to bring them together? The emulsifier, which is what? The mustard. the mustard. It's like making a sauce. Or who likes crab cakes in here? And what do you usually add that brings it all together to make it hold together? No, something that comes out of a chicken. The egg. Eggs are an emulsifier. When you're making different dishes like uh, hollandaise and stuff like that, that's egg. When you're making mayonnaise, egg yolk. It says egg yolk and, and, uh, and oil. It's mayonnaise. A little bit of salt and pepper, Tabasco, horseradish. But mayonnaise is just egg yolk and oil. So if you don't want to go to your grocery store anymore, you can. But just learn how to do it. Make sure you look at YouTube or Chef Daniel Thomas yeah. and check it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my mustard. It's a brand new mustard, so I know the topping that off of it yet. Now I'm asking an off the uh, wall question. Who likes uh, blue crabs? All right, who likes crab legs? Who likes seafood? OK, all right. Who's from Washington, DC, Maryland, Virginia? Oh, then you all should be raising your hand about eating blue crabs then. Maybe you don't, OK. So I'm going to add just a little mustard. Now, all I need is about a good teaspoon to a tablespoon. Uh, again? Okay, so we'll make double portion. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Did I get it? Oh, that's my perfect. Come on. Show some love, everybody. Show some love. Come on. Come on. And that's just mustard. Come on, somebody. Just mustard. I haven't even got to the good part. That's just the mustard. Praise them. So, mm, so we're going to add some things. Now, I have... Uh, so now I'm going to add, that's mustard. Now the vinegar portion. Now I want to make a nice rosé vinegar. Ooh, rosé. You're like, hmm, where do you get that from? Your local grocery store. Matter of fact, it looks fancy, right? Yes. Where do you think I got it from? Safeway. Walmart. <laughs> yeah, weren't, you weren't supposed to say it all right away. You're supposed to be like, you know, Italy or something like that, you know? <laughs> It, it, it sounded good, but no, I got it from Safeway. This says Safeway Select. <laughs> Don't, I'm trying to tell you, but it tastes delicious. Now, when I, when I go cook for clients and stuff like that, I have, a, I have an oil and vinegar store that I do go to where I get the, the premium stuff, the stuff that's bought in, and they, they have so much stuff. You should go to a Pennsylvania Avenue. They didn't pay me yet, so I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm a businessman. I'm a businessman, you know? So... Matter of fact, I just want somebody to smell it. Just who, who has a good nose in here? Who's going to give me? Who, okay, chef, s stand up, chef. Now, when you smell it, you got to, mmm. And then you got you to shake your body, okay? Dang, that 
do smell good. That, that, I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. All right, you stand up. Here we go. Now, when you smell it, you got to shake your body, okay? All right. Ooh. You see it? You see it? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Safeway Select does for you. I'm trying to tell you. It, gets, it just gets you right into your body and stuff like that. I'm trying to tell you. So I'm going to add just a little bit of this. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm making a lot. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> she got here two minutes ago and call it making trouble already. Miss Lateness over there. Did you hear her? Yeah, yeah, you know, you know. I love when people do that, though. They were like, Chef, when you got to, okay. What was the first key word you said in that sentence just now? Chef, Chef. all right. You know, so now I'm going to just do a little. See, this is where you need your wrist, but it's okay. Hmm? I don't know. That's what I'm going to say. I don't know. It's somewhere, it might be in the car. It might have dropped out of the bag. It's a, but it sounds better when I say they took it, though. You know? <laughs> sounds better. So now I'm going to make a low fat vinaigrette. So now everybody's kind of like, hmm. So I'll let you guys see it real quick. So it's just. You see? Nothing fancy. It's just vinegar and mustard. That's all that is. Just a little vinegar and mustard. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll do this. Just so you guys can see it. So that's what it looks like. You know, with the whisk, it just breaks the mustard down just a little bit more. But that's what this is. So now, that's what that is. So now, to make a low fat vinegar, so it looks better this way. Now I have my oil. This is extra virgin olive oil. It really isn't. No, this is vegetable oil. So what happens is, and, what, and, I, and I bought the vegetable oil just to let you know that you can use any oil that's in your house, as long as you don't have nut allergies and stuff like that before you use things like that. But it's all dealing with heart health. So with the oil, somebody just has to whisk. So this is where you cook together with somebody. Who has a significant other? Who doesn't? That leaves about the rest of you in here. That's about 30 people in here that, that's in the gray area. <laughs> uh, on their schedule, it says complicated, you know. <laughs> Somebody's in here that, that they, 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 all right. I want to ask any questions, you know. So I want to make sure you stay heart healthy, that your heart continues to, to go. So, I, so we're going to add, you ready? So we're going to add about a tablespoon. That's all I need for my vinaigrette. That's a low-fat vinaigrette. Now, how much less than that than when you see at the grocery store? Your question? Yes. Because I'm just letting you know that you do not have to go get some people. I like to show people how to shop on a budget. And so at the end of the day, you have vegetable oil, you have corn oil, you have extra virgin olive oil. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about, see, I can sit here and tell you to not eat uh, X, Y, and Z. I can tell you that, you know, if you have diabetic health, um, you're going to only have seven strawberries, I mean, four strawberries. You're going to have eight grapes. You can only have, I mean, I can go down a list of things in terms of what you can't eat and what you can eat. But at the end of the day, it's all about one word that starts with the M. And what is that? No, moderation. <laughs> See this? Lord. <laughs> and so what happens is, yeah, so there might, not, there might be an a oil that might be better for you in certain situations. You might say, well, extra virgin olive oil is better for this. You might say vegetable oil is better for that. You might say Crisco is not good for anything, but it tastes great on fried chicken. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about using moderation. Yes, ma'am. I, I guess um, I'm thinking maybe she's thinking, is, is olive oil or um, vegetable oil any less added than the other? You know? Well, I mean, it, it goes into, uh, it's, it's similar to, 
to the analogy I'm going to give, like uh, guava. Who likes Starbucks? OK, you don't like Starbucks. All right. Uh, well, who likes, who likes guava? You like guava. It's like a different sweetener and things like that, right? So tomato, tomato. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I, huh? So you had the, no, I'm, so yes, I messed it up. My, my, my apologies. Yes. <laughs> so agave, yes, that's, that's the name of it. Sorry. My bad. Yes, there is a fruit, guava fruit. Yes. Green, round, has, anyway. I, so yes, agave, what happens is um, it just depends on what you're using it for. Uh, it, it, it's about moderation. It just, it just depends on the application that you're using it for. Just like uh, agave, you, you know, no, I appreciate it. Hey, look, I, I, I make a, I'm human. I made a mistake. Sorry. Agave, um, you all knew what I was talking about. Uh, aga yes, you did. Uh, 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 <laughs> agave is used um, in a lot of tea drinks and things like that. But they say agave because you hear the word agave, they say that it's better for you than sugar is. But actually, in most cases, it's worse unless you're getting it because it's processed. When it gets to the retail store, it's processed now. So it's actually worse in certain applications for consumers than it would be in terms of if you're getting it concentrated straight from the wholesale instead of retail where it's been processed and broken down. You follow me now? Yeah. So it just depends on what application you're using it for. Vegetable oil or butter. You know, sometimes butter in certain applications is better for you. Sugar in certain applications. You know, uh, you know diabetics, they need sugar. So it's okay to have a small piece of cake, you know, if your sugar is low and stuff like that, or a piece of peppermint. Most people say you can't have all these things. So you follow me? Is that okay? All right. You sure? <laughs> she almost, she said, wait a minute. She almost, she almost got up here. I said, all right. <laughs> and Dr. Dr. Jones, how come you didn't take her? You should have took her out of here and took it. Okay, good. <laughs> so, let me taste that. I need my whisk. So, I'm then now going to add just a little bit of this balsamic glaze. Look, oh, a little sexy action in there. <laughs> Two more times. One. All right, there we go. And so, what happens is, so you really need a whisk. But now, what happens is the, the you got to find me a spoon. Is there a spoon here? Probably not. Fuck, use this cup. And you got to, what happens is you got to whisk it real, real fast to make sure all the ingredients are put in. And so, now I have my own vinaigrette. Oh, now, can I offer somebody a glove and a finger? <laughs> I'm so serious. Somebody take this glove. I need two volunteers. Don't all jump at one time, because then you're going to ask me for food later on. All right. Glove number one, glove number two. Okay, you ready? No, no, follow it. One, two, three, left. One, two, three. Uh huh. They got the glove on. You, you, do. you already got the glove on. What are you, Michael Jackson? Get the glove on, you know? <laughs> so, now, so you gotta make sure you stick your finger deep in there. Yeah. All right? Now, hurry up and taste it. Now, hurry up and taste it. Good. You like that? All I did was add just a couple of ingredients that I have on this table that cost me no more than my household items. Give them a hand, everybody. Yeah. Gotta tell you. Now, I didn't pay them to do that, okay? I didn't pay them to. So. What's that glaze for? Say again? It's a balsamic glaze. It's just a, so balsamic glaze is, it's just balsamic vinegar reduced. Everybody, so what happens is, as chefs, I'm going to give you a couple of tips. Sorry, chef, i got to let them know. Um, <laughs> as we work at restaurants and stuff like that, um, okay, 15 minutes to finish it up, no problem. As we work at different restaurants, you know, and things like that, we know how to charge lots of money just by names. I can take this bottle, where's my balsamic? If I had some balsamic vinegar here, any balsamic vinegar in here, 
I can make taste like a thousand dollar bottle of balsamic glaze. The reason is because you put balsamic vinegar and you put it into a, a saute pan, a sartus. And so you put that in the menu. It's been in the sartus. And it, you make a French type. It shouldn't deserve a blizz on these only. And then you come out, and I charge you $1,000 just for that one, one word. And then you cook it, and you bring it down into a glaze. And as you keep cooking it and cooking it, let it reduce, then it's going to start bubbling like sugar would do in a pan. And then you take it, scoop it out, and then when you get a plate, and you start really, so I'm going to show you real quick. This is what we do. And we take that same glaze that's in that pan, and we... I just charge you $1,000 just to take my summer glaze. Right now, I can sit here and put, let's say this is like a chocolate sauce, I can put a cheesecake that cost me two bucks from down the street and make it look like a $30 plate just by a little whipped cream, a little decoration, and just literally, this is art. Anybody, we got 25 over here? Can I get, can I get 30? Can I get 30? It's not even my plate. So are you, are you following me? So just a little bit of decoration there. Um, and so, that's, that's all it is. That's all balsamic glaze is. So you don't even have to buy this. You can literally go to the store, buy some balsamic vinegar, or if you have some home, and literally just put it in the pan, let it reduce, and it's going to taste so good and just heavily. You can put it on steak. You can make some filet mignon and then glaze it. Add, matter of fact, add some balsamic vinegar to your pan, um, some garlic, some mushrooms, and then add the uh, red wine, which is heart health. <laughs> who, likes a little, who likes a little red wine? A little libation. <laughs> who likes a little white wine? Anybody like Moscato? Yes. <laughs> the, the club goes in the front, you know? Listening to T-Pain and Moscato. I, tell you, I knew it was something about you here in the front, you know? So as I get ready to do this, I'm going to show you, uh-oh. Where are those lettuce? Where's that extra lettuce that I had? The, the lettuce? Yeah, she's going to go get it. OK. Um, so I'm going to show you very quickly. So instead of. Now we're going to talk about plating. Plating is sexy. But if you do this, like, that's sexy. This is not. Sexy, not sexy. OK? So what is this? Sexy, not sexy. 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 Ah! <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I'm going to quickly um, just cut these bad boys in half. And you can add just, you can put it right here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Kylie. And so now, now that I have that, now all I have done was, now I'm going to add just a couple of things to help with blood circulation, some, some hot things um, that, that helps with. So I'm going to add, which ginger is good for the heart. So just a little bit of ginger. You know, you get this at the grocery store. A little bit of chili powder, but just, just a, a sprinkle. Now, chili powder, wait a minute. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Get out of here. I call a SWAT team in here so quick, try to tell you. I've been taking care of these guys. They take care of me now. 1013, chef needs assistance. You know? <laughs> so a little, a little bit of that action, and then I can do something even hotter, a little cayenne. But, ooh, but what happens is, let me tell you, why, why is it not gonna be so hot now? I, I just added chili powder, I just added cayenne and ginger. All have some, are pretty, pretty tough, but well, how come it's not gonna be very, very hot? Because the acidity from the tomato will cut that in half. It's kinda like drinking red wine. Does anybody know why red wine is best eat, drinking with red meat? Say why, chef. Why? So let's say you have a ribeye steak. Who love, anybody love steak in here? Anybody ribeye fans? They had a lot of fat and stuff like that, ribeye? All right, ladies, filet me on, right? Yeah. Let the good stuff, I can tell you. So ribeye is very fatty. And what happens is the ribeye and the fat helps to cut the harsh tannins in the red wine. So they complement each other. So you drink red wine by itself, it could be too harsh. But if you eat it with a piece of steak or something like that, it, it just goes down so heavenly and it just makes you do one of these numbers. Are you following me? Did you see how easy I got down there and I came back up? <laughs> All right, my young man here. So I have that stuff. So 
I'm going to place them just like this. Matter of fact, I'm going to show, now I'm going to do something called stacking very quickly. I'm going to do something called stacking. Stacking is very, very important because most people do one of these numbers. And they be like, hey, baby, are you hungry? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not. Thanks for asking. I'll have Roman noodles, please. <laughs> it's all about plating. I mean, you can really make your life so much easier just by making your food look good. You go to a restaurant, why don't you do it for yourself? I know you're tired, but just take a little, just get a little sexy with it. Just say, you know, I'm feeling right today, you know? Everybody say, I'm feeling right today. I'm feeling right today. Oh, you see, meditation, feeling right. You know, she was stress relievers. So, stacking is when you take lettuce. So I have a mescaline mix, which is mosh, mizuna, it has uh, red leaf, green leaf, uh, frisee, spinach. Um, and arugula is good because it has the tomatoes and the sweet balsamic goes very, very well with it because the harshness from the tomatoes and acidity will cut the, the pepperiness of the arugula, which then give the sweetness of the balsamic and it just comes together. Oh, my, my Lord. And then it's just, my God, come on. So I call this right here my money maker. And I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to show you. Matter of fact, uh, you, can you come up here, Chef, real quick? This is my, my helper right, right here. Yep. I know, right? Sorry, Chef. <laughs> you, you dropped my bowl downstairs. <laughs> we done we we seen enough of you, all right? So could you hold this plate? And I'm just doing this so people can see it. Is that okay with you all? Yes. <laughs> Don't get fired early now. So I'm going to just add this here just like this. You're doing an amazing job. I just want to let you know that, okay? You have your hair net today? All right, no worries, no worries. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. From seeing this so far, do you think I'm going to do well on my TV show, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. yes. It's going to be all right? I know you're struggling, but just give me a second, okay? So now I have that, right? I add this. Now, understand that, please, just hold your breath. I understand this, that, don't hold your breath, please breathe. <laughs> understand that when you add the tomato, you can't touch it again. Why is that, Chef? Okay, so what happens is when you add a tomato, <laughs> you know somebody lying when they say, so what'd you say when they ask your question? You know, you know they ask your question. So what happens is because you do not want it to start sliding all over the place and it starts to look nasty, so you don't want that stuff. So I add this just like this. How's it looking so far? Is all right? Just like that. And then. I'm going to add, please do not drop it on my head, please. I bought some goodies with me. So I have some pieces of marinated grilled chicken for protein, which is good for it. So, say what now? Come back there. She's like, come on, just bring the plate with you, right? <laughs> Moderation. So that's enough of that. Now, I know you, some people might have nut allergies, but walnuts are great for heart health. Can, and almonds, but I, I, I got, she was helping me out. She was like, and almonds, but I got that next. Oh, she gave me a thumbs up. There you go. So you add a little bit of these. Now, these are jalapeno toasted. Um, oh, oh, you should have seen her. She said, oh, <laughs> uh, I love it. So I tell you. My ex is 58. You're a young, young lady. <laughs> so you add just a couple of those right on top. You see that? Now, you don't want to overcrowd the plate. You don't want to overcrowd the plate. Now, what I tell you this was. Now, hold on real quick. Hold on. So just. Oh, you see, that, that, tell me that ain't sexy, baby. Come on now, that's sexy, woo! Get you excited, let me get these out of the way for the camera shot. So now, ladies and gentlemen, for what we've all been waiting for. Are you ready? You come on this side. Don't, you don't okay. 
Okay, you ready? Can you all see it so far? Yeah. And this is where you go ahead and make a whole lot of noise when I put this on. But this is the money maker. This is when I charge you $40 for a salad. That cost me $3 to make. You ready? You guys got to be quiet. It's serious. Now you can there you go. Woo! Give her a hand, everybody. Give her a hand. Come here. Come here. Come here. There we go. Boom. You see that? Yeah. Now, that right there is a salad, and with five minutes to spare. So that right there is what I call a summer, summer sexy, heart healthy, make you dance with it all day salad for you. <laughs> and what this is, is great. Now you can do two things with the tomatoes. You can take tomatoes, you can cut those in half, and then you can take just a little bit of this rose vinegar, or whatever kind of vinegar you have, literally like a teaspoon, and then you can add uh, some, anybody know what dry parsley flakes are? No. Just give, or if you want to do chopped parsley, but if you don't have chopped parsley, so dry parsley flakes and a teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil, add it to it and, the, and let the, the parsley in there and then coat it. Toss it a little bit and you can toss it and make it look just like the green will just pop, it look like Christmas on the plate and it's just very, very sexy. And so you can sit here and then once you eat the salad, I only added just a little bit of dressing but you have the glaze on the bottom. So you can sit there and scrape the bottom as you're doing it with the fork and then if you want to lick the plate, I mean, that, it's your home. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> do whatever you want. I do want to let you know that, yeah, you, you, you can. I mean, it's just uh, when you come up here, you can taste some of the salad. Um, I use ginger. I use so many different heart-healthy items. Understand that at the end of the day, being on a serious note, only you can change the way that you eat. I can, I can sit here and I can t talk to you until you're blue in the face. But at the end of the day, if you want to make a change in your diet, in your health, only you can make it. I can, as, as out of the words of Morpheus, I can walk you through the door. <laughs> I can walk you to the door, but you have to walk through it. There is no red pill or green pill or blue pill. There's just changing your diet, exercising, starting off slow, and doing the right thing. My book is up here. I would love to sign a copy for each and every last one of you. I would love your support as we continue to grow. And at the end of the day, maybe in a couple of years, it may be worth something. I doubt it, but I'm just saying it's a possibility. <laughs> but when you do the TV show, it's going to be amazing. Make sure that I, uh, they already have like your emails and stuff, so we'll send an email blast. Um, hopefully, you all want me to come back because I would love to come and do another cooking demonstration. Make sure you let your friends and family know. You can go to my website at chefdanielwthomas.com, which is this website right here, chefdanielwthomas.com. I have... Um, recipes on here. I have letters from senators and Congress. I have uh, about 50 food pictures and, and all kind of stuff. And um, I just want to let you know, my name is Chef Daniel Thomas. I'm your culinary creator for the world's most powerful appetites. It's been a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you so much, you guys. And we have a couple of minutes for questions and answers for Dr. Charles, for the chef, and for Dr. Day. So if you have any questions, you want to ask them very quickly. Questions? Larry? Will, will your TV show be taped where? Well, I can't tell you all that, but I know a portion of it is going to be taped here, so it will be easier for the politicians to come to and fro. Uh, so we're going to, there will be a set most likely here in Washington, D.C. Okay, so two ladies. The $20? Mm -hmm. How did you get into being a chef? Uh, three years old, I knew I wanted to be a chef. Uh, my dad is a pastor, and the ladies would take me downstairs and talk to me like I was a chef in the kitchen. I guess I was listening. And I actually have letters in sixth grade about what I wanted to cook for the president of the United States. I just never thought it would be three presidents, over 100 foreign pr presidents, prime ministers, kings and queens, and kind of sitting in front of you all find people talking about healthy eating. Okay. Thank you. I'm ready to sign. Here we go. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Dr. Sandra Charles. One more time, everybody. Thank you. And thanks also to the Daniel oh. A.P. Murray Association for sponsoring and Elsie Cooking for Laverne and Shirley. Woo! 
This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.